Hello. I come to you in this trying time, recording more spreadsheet-based wrestling while the outside world dies from the coronavirus. <laughs> uh, no, but in all seriousness, um, depending on when this goes up, hopefully soon, because, I mean, I'm technically done. I, I'm... Okay, Tuck, Tucker Life Update. Da -na -na. Um, if you watched last video in the description, I talked a little bit uh, just about stuff that's going on with me. Uh, my dog. The one that's typically in the background on the bed, like, shuffling around all the time. And I'm always like, the fuck is he doing back there? Um, he's basically dying, which is great. Uh, so, you know, that's made me feel really good. Um, school got a lot more difficult. Or at least being away from home for so long got a lot more difficult probably compounded by the fact that, you know, my dog is dying, um, so yeah, you know, all around, things weren't very good for a little while, uh, it's why I didn't record for, like, the entire month of February, I think, like, the last thing I recorded, I recorded, like, halfway through January, maybe, um, so yeah, yeah, you know, it's, um, it's pretty fucking cool, this is almost the end of March now, um, things are kind of getting back on track, so I believe, like, most of you who are in university, uh, or colleges, or even high schools, uh, and elementary schools, middle schools, maybe even if you're in the States, ooh, spooky place, um, I never, I never knew a middle school, never, we just do elementary, which is kindergarten to eight, and then high school, which is nine to twelve, and then you're just out in the world, I'm drinking a thing, by the way, so if I ever just, like, stop talking and just drink something, it's because of that, I'm, I'm literally, like, low budgeting the fuck out of this and it's normally really low budget here but you know i'm just like shooting a shit um so um where the fuck was i right so yeah um classes have been closed pretty much we've moved basically all into like e-learning which is weird i have like half of my projects done already everything else is kind of just like meh for a little while um and i work i work or i worked last summer and i'm hoping to work again i mean they typically rehire the people who went off to school but I'll leave it at that. Um, yeah, I work in food, basically. I would be a server. Uh, so, you know, that's kind of not possible because my country, Canada, has uh, closed restaurants or urged restaurants to close and stuff like that. So, no, I believe they've actually fully closed them now. Our province has uh, of Ontario uh, as I continue getting closer to doxing myself. Uh, but, like, yeah, so basically it means I've got a lot of free time. Been... Um, hanging out with my friends a lot, even though maybe that's not the smartest thing to do during an outbreak, um, but we're all healthy right now, uh, nobody's showing any signs of anything, nobody's traveling out of the country, which by the way, if you're, if you're traveling the world during this coronavirus, um, you're an absolute moron, and like, I have a personal, like, deep personal hatred for you, um, and I mean that, I genuinely mean that, uh, you know, you're putting everybody else at risk by getting up and going to Florida for March break. All, like, seven people that I know who did that. Uh, none of them. Close friends of mine, thankfully. Um. Yeah, I don't, I don't know what else to talk about. Um, anyways, we're back on the old horse here. Um. We're definitely probably not gonna get to, uh, <laughs> to 2001 like I wanted. Um basically be his last month the last two months and a bit i guess technically two probably collectively um we've made no progress um which sucks um but i mean sorry but i was going through personal shit <laughs> like I, I i don't really need like your guys um why did i look at my phone for a second that was really weird to me um i was about to say rude i'm like i'm recording a video i can do whatever the fuck i want um yeah, so, um, I think, um, I don't know, I'm not gonna come on here looking for forgiveness, I went through a rough time personally, fucking deal with it, sorry, and I don't mean to sound that harsh, but, um, I don't know, I've never understood why some creators are like, I have to take a break for myself, sorry guys, it's like, just take a break, seriously, just let everybody know you're taking a break, or in my case, apparently, let nobody know and just disappear, um, I guess if you were, like, hot, like, if you were more well-known and were consistent, because I'm not consistent for shit anymore, maybe that'll change with 2020, we don't know. Um, but yeah, so, as I'm recording this, this is March 18th, I believe, TW2020 is supposed to come out on, like, April 20th, I think, I don't know why I have that date, 
Maybe just because it's April 2020, and that's why I think 20th. Um, but either way, um, yeah. Uh, maybe it's also because Animal Crossing drops on March 20th, which is going to be really fun. I'm fucking really excited. Um, but, like, um, there was an overall point. Right, yeah, so we probably won't make it to March 2001 or April 2001, which I'm okay with because, I mean, like, we've done a lot in this series. I'm really proud of a lot of this series. There are certain... I'm not proud of all of it. Um, mostly, um, and not in quality. I'm proud of most of the quality of it, but my consistency has been really bad in this last year or so of the game, which um, I greatly apologize for. Um, it was a tough time. I was doing a lot of different things with school. Consistency was really hard. Um, that's what it is what it is, but, you know, technically now school's over, so no, who knows, maybe we could pound out a couple more. Um, I haven't had any continuing conversations with the guy who I used to run a series with on this channel. Well, I mean, we've been in conversations, but nothing about doing a series that has been teased. Um, I feel like I provide monthly updates just saying nothing's, nothing's happened, nothing's happened. Um, probably look for maybe an announcement on that once we start to figure out what mods we're gonna get for 2020, because, of course, we're completely at the mercy of those who make the mods, uh, because they're great, and, I mean, I, I think this is gonna be really weird, right, all of a sudden Tucker's going against his entire brand, which was like, you know, a lot of mods are bad in GW, and I think, I think a lot of them still are, there are very few that I would call really good, um, but it doesn't necessarily matter, um, because the people who put in the time and work to do those mods, they obviously have a lot more dedication than me, but, you know, they put in that time and effort to make those mods, and I think um, that in and of itself is really special. Um, I, I do think that the fact that TW is still kind of shaky on, like, what the fuck every single stat means, like, I think I know a lot more than most people what every single stat means, because I used to know a guy who was really into the particulars of stats. Like, he, could, he had a chart of what each, um, I don't, I think it was star quality, what each star quality or something like that meant your overall popularity would be, and he could kind of accurately predict pop caps, um, because if you don't know, in TW, some characters can only get so over, and then they'll start losing popularity again. You can't get every single character to 100 popularity. You just can't. There are pop caps for certain characters. They're typically, like, quite high, like, I think high 80s low 90s is like the typical pop cap um i guess it's to stop everybody you, you, it's to stop i guess people from building up seven like 100 overall popularity people you know what i mean completely like ruining any aspect of the game because when you think about it right this game is meant for the seavers which is trying to tell a very particular universe's story uh where we've modded it to try to tell the real world story it's not necessarily great at that um, but it works well enough, and also there's no, there's no competition. I've said that many times also. TW is so popular because there's no competition. Nobody else is doing this. Um, but I did want to speak on 2020 in general. If you're this far into the video, um, I'm probably not jumping to 2020 immediately. I'll buy it, probably day one, but I don't know if we're going to start making content the very next day for it. Um, I'm not as super crazy excited with TW like I used to be. Like, I believe for the launch of tw uh, 2016, I was, like, streaming a whole bunch of stuff like that and just trying to generally show off the game. Um, that's probably not the place for this. Or, this is probably not the place for that, excuse me. Um, I'm kind of thinking I'll probably just stick with 2016 until I solidly, like, until there are good mods out and I decide what my first thing will be for 2020. And I don't know how long that could take. That could take... Um, a couple weeks, could take maybe two months, who knows, um, but when the time is right, we will jump ship to 2020, um, which is decent, actually, because now thinking about it, we might be able to make it to 2001 in this, I doubt it, because, I mean, we could technically, depending on this whole coronavirus thing, um, a lot of people seem to think it's just going to get better in a couple months, I don't know how anybody could assume that, unless we found, um, unless we found, a, like, a vaccine or some kind of treatment for it, uh, or we just isolated everybody down so much that uh, the virus eventually just dies out. Um, I think the more likely thing is that, like, 60-70% of the entire Earth's population gets it, and we kind of just build up an immunity to it and move on. 
which is really scary for those who are um, have like compromised immune systems and those that are older. Um, getting messages. Never mind. It's just it's just a it's just a nerd. Just a nerd texting me. Um, but yeah, you know that was a big spiel about nothing, more or less, to to just come up with the point. Um, I'll get to 2020 when I get there. Um, depends what I'll be doing over there. I'm not necessarily sure yet. Uh, I know I've thrown around a couple ideas. Um, thrown around a couple ideas in my head. Uh, but really, I just want to stay focused on here for now. Um, whatever I do end up doing, I want to have a long life for it. Like, I'm thinking take, in theory... And this is in theory, of course. Something could change. I could really hate it, whatever. In theory, um, I mean, I, I won't put it out if I really hate it, obviously. But in theory, I want to take one series and just keep going with one series. Which means I need to give myself a lot of leeway, technically. Which is why I think I said originally doing like a Jim Crockett promotions in the 80s and just building forward could be really, really fun. Um... Could be really really fun like if we got far enough like trying to see the world in like 2000 how crazy that would be that's 15 years in game that's like insane but i could do it because the first months the first years would probably go by pretty fast because we're not booking like regular tv we're booking like a one hour kind of like here's some shit that happened on the house shows which i think you might actually be able to do in 2020 uh, which is cool because you know now you couldn't you couldn't even do like what did they take out they took out um, it was called like clip show or something like that basically it let New Japan run their TV shows like uh, they're they're like highlight reels anyways let's move on all right so this is the go home show to um, the ECW living dangerously um, we are in the Landover Capital Center. Um, in Tri-State, it's our home, home, home region, New York, New York, um, and yeah, I, I think I'm just ready to do it, um, let's just kick it into gear, kick off with 100 Day Star, Kurt Angle's being very overconfident, he's like, he, cause he's got Mikey Whipwreck, uh, on Sunday, or no, I guess today, it, it's so weird, right, because our TV shows are technically taped for the next week, but like, I don't play by that, you know what I mean, like, at all. Like, I just do the shows as they arrive. I pretend like our TV show is live, even though it's not. Um, anyways, so Kurt Angle's being really overconfident. He's hanging out with, like, models and porn stars represented here by Jasmine St. Clair uh, because she's dating the Blue Meanie, and Blue Meanie got really happy. So I'm like, cool, we got another boost in backstage for basically nothing. Um, but, yeah, no, so we have Kurt Angle. He's, like, hanging out having a party man he's he's like he's not drinking he's not doing drugs because kurt angle is a responsible american hero he is um he's in the club with like a water bottle hanging out and he's like this is great i love this this is amazing and then somebody finally asks him kurt aren't you like aren't you like wrestling somebody later and he's like maybe i don't give a fuck though <laughs> I'm Kurt Angle, bitch. <laughs> what the fuck? God damn it. Uh, uh, yeah, so I crack myself up again because uh, I am the funniest man in the world and I'll have no competition. Moving on. Uh, here we have Shane Douglas. He's with the rest of the Triple Threat and their girls. Uh, and he says, Lance, Chris, I want you to stay back here and I want you to watch this on the monitor. You're about to watch a winner in action. He goes out there, and he fights Balls Mahoney in a really fucking good match. Wow, holy shit. Uh, 79B to open up, and about that, a good wrestling, decent match to the crowd. Shane Douglas defeated Balls Mahoney in 959 by pinfall with a belly-to-belly -belly suplex. God damn. Just thinking about Shane hoisting up balls for a... Hoisting up balls, god damn it. Hoisting up Mahoney for a belly-to-belly uh, -belly suplex. Toss him over him. Ooh, big, big, big strong boy. Um, yeah, that's a, that's a good fucking match to open. Shane Douglas continuing to build... Excuse me, had a burp there. Momentum. This is why did I why did I like forget what my own angle was here? Anyways, Chris Jericho's in the ring and he says, "Sandman, 
say, man, I'm done. All right, you're not attacking me anymore. We're, we're settling this. I want your ass. I want to I kick the shit out of you. All right, you, you fucking worthless piece of shit. Um, and woman actually comes out. Woman locks eyes with Jericho. She says, yeah, okay. Living dangerously. Jericho's like, you're on, bitch. And then from behind, Sandman fucking attacks him. Um, you know, just another angle. Get this going. Get this match out of the way. Because uh, I've got I've got some new plans. Because if you can't tell, every single time I take a somewhat prolonged break from this, I come back with a new set of plans, and I'm like, I know what I'm doing now. Uh, this is Sexton Hardcastle and Christian Cage. They're talking about their match on the Living Dangerously pay-per-view. They're taking on the Hardy Brothers. The winner will take on Tosa Suba for the ECW World Tag Team Championships in the near future. Um, I don't know. They talk about when they win, they're going to be up all night. They're, they're their own all-night crew. Ha ha. Ha ha. Shout out to Cam, who's the only one who got that reference. Um... Moving forward, 56C minus, and for the decent wrestling demo cheat, Raven says defeated the Gang Standards in 820 when Chris Daniels defeated John Cronus by Pinfall the Nevermore. Uh, so yeah, we're just trying to get them to hit their, um, hit their fucking chemistry thing. It won't happen, obviously, in time for our next show. Uh, but whatever. I, I don't care. I'm okay with it. Because sometimes you just have to push forward with something that isn't working. Because storyline reasons. Yep. Uh, anyways. <clears throat> Cronus is a gimmick that's getting stale. Good to know, I guess. Uh, so this is a decent angle. So, um, CM Punk and Chris Daniels are celebrating the victory in the ring. Uh, when Rob Van Dam runs down, fucking tosses a chair at Daniels, kind of hits Daniels in the face, kind of stunned, hits a Van Daminator, yeah, Van Daminator, onto Punk, uh, kicks Daniels in the gut and gives him a brain buster or something like that. Uh, Raven and Daphne run down, but RVD uh, rolls out of the ring, kind of goes into the crowd. We get a nice shot of him with all the people doing the doing the Rob Van Dam thing. Um, RVD looking good, but uh, I mean he did sneak attack these two, so who knows what's gonna happen on the pay per view. Seventy one C plus Jerry Lynn's back. Jerry Lynn says, you know I. If you've been watching, you know what I've been doing the past couple weeks. I've been helping a friend. And he's going to be okay. And he looks out to the ECW crowd and he says he's going to be okay. I have faith in him. He has faith in him. And I think that's more important than anything. Jerry says, but nonetheless, it's not I'm back. I've been put in the main event in a match against Justin Incredible. And I'm ready to begin building momentum back to winning the ECW World Championship for a second time. We move on here. We get a <laughs> very vocal crowd treated Big Dick Dudley with utter contempt. God, they really hate Big Dick. No Big Dick for these people. Uh, and I bet that had decent wrestling, but didn't have much heat. Little Guido defeated Big Dick Dudley in 630 by submission of the Sicilian Crab after appearance from Tommy Rich. So I imagine... Uh, Tony Rich kind of gets up on the apron, distracts Big Dick Dudley, and they literally fucking tabletop him. Like, little Guido goes on his hands and knees underneath and tabletops him, and then kind of just jumps back up really quick, tosses him over, Sicilian Crab gets the tap out. Uh, we see Taz, and it's interesting. It's I, I would just kind of let this narrative point hang, but I mean... And I don't mean this about necessarily the viewer... And I would like to address this to you, the viewer. Um, TW often um, doesn't have interesting little parallels like this, where Taz is training really, really hard, and Kurt Angle is kind of relaxed, uh, showing the parallels between the two champions, how seriously they're taking their competition. Um, I don't think most people in TW are doing that, and there would have been a time, I think, in my TW lifespan where I would have been really vocal about the fact that, oh, nobody else is doing that, so they're better than me, or I'm better than them. <laughs> um, but, I don't know. I, I TW's interesting because you can do whatever you want with it, and you can either use it to tell highbrow story, or you can just play the game. And really, one is not better than the other. I may prefer one, 
um, one that isn't necessarily done a whole bunch, which is, you know, the high art uh, of, you know, clicking the button on the spreadsheet and seeing what numbers come up. But, um, yeah. Is this, this is it? Is this my baby face turn? Is this the point that I've always thought of where I was like, now I'm, I, 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 I've been, I don't know, I've been humbled by the world and now I appreciate everything? Who knows? Probably. Probably not. Who knows? We'll see. We'll see what next episode's like. Um, we see Tommy Dreamer, actually. He's, we don't really know where he is. I was gonna say backstage, but I don't, we don't know where that is. Like, you know what I mean? He could be anywhere. And he's kind of just sitting there. And he's thinking. And then there's this. And he kind of raises his head and there's this look of determination in his eyes that we haven't seen for a little while. Like the broken road is finally finally connected itself back up to the highway and in merges Tommy Dreamer I don't know something something car reference shut up uh, main event does okay I mean I wasn't expecting much from this Jerry Lynn defeats Justin Credible in 1621 by pinfall to create a pile driver it's a 61 C Credible's absolutely fucking awful like Credible's fucking terrible this dude sucks shit like genuinely he's fucking awful in this mod <laughs> hilarious. I mean, because I don't think Jurassic Credible is very good, but you know, whatever. Moving on. To close out, we had an ADB. As the message is sent, Abyss is training in a similar format to Taz. Like, imagine like a Rocky versus Ivan Drago type thing, but Abyss is like, he's training in like, this like, decrepit old building. Instead of, like, punching punching bags, he's, like, punching fucking columns of rock. Like, what the fuck is this guy? This dude's fucking crazy. Percy Pringle simply addresses Taz's words from last week. He said he wasn't afraid of Abyss, and that's fine, because Abyss's objective isn't fear. Raven's objective isn't fear. Fear was never the objective. The objective is the ECW World Championship and the complete destruction of the human suplex machine. And with that, we go to the pay-per-view. It's an 82B, up in 7, looking good, looking great. Uh, there's Bob Holly making a weird face. And here's the pay-per-view, and I'll catch you with that next time. Yeah, next episode. Um, cool, that's saved in. I'll, I'll catch you then. I hope you guys enjoyed, as usual. This is Silly Talk. Signing out.